Hey peeps, we are back. We are talking the Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 13, episode four. Hey, before we get into the video, please do me the honors of subscribing to my channel, hitting the notification bell so you can always be notified when I post new content, hitting the thumbs up because that does wonders for my channel, and share. Thanks. All right, before we get into the episode, there has been so many crazy things that have been happening in the world of Bravo. So let's get into some of those things before we get into the show. First off, listen, Michael Darby, Gullum, anyway, is suing Candace Diller Bassett over the oral sex claims that she made on the show. Remember when they were at the vineyard and she told Ashley, your husband likes to leave you and go to a man named and they bleep the man's name out uh, to this man's house and suck his you know what she even though she doesn't say what the guy's name is Michael Darby is upset about this it says that he sent her a cease and desist earlier this year regarding those comments and he is upset that she has not retracted any of her allegations so he is now suing her for two million dollars there is not one woman on the Real Housewives of the Potomac that has not had some sort of comment about Michael Darby or has not had something going on with this man behind the scenes. We have seen video of him tapping people's butt all the way back to when Katie was on the show and she had that boyfriend. He was trying to tap that boyfriend's butt. All of this is alleged, but we saw it on the show. Don't come suing me, Michael Darby, because I don't have shit. Anyway, I mean, serious, I think a judge is going to throw this out. I mean, seriously, Michael, give it up. There is evidence on the news about you in this supposed alleged touching the cameraman on the series. I don't think that he's going to get this $2 million, but you know what? He had to try it. There is no fixing or repairing your reputation. You did this to yourself. Peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Do you think Michael's going to win this? Do you think that he should be suing Candace? I think he's just trying to get back at her because she's made so many comments about him. But it's his own behavior that's being called out. This is different from the Chris situation. Chris didn't do anything. Michael Darby has been implicated and we've seen him all over the blogs, your local news, everywhere. Michael Darby, give it up. Honey, now listen. Over at the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Drew and Ralph have both filed for divorce. They filed for divorce within 61 minutes of each other. Drew got down to the courthouse 61 minutes before Ralph and filed for divorce. It turns out, allegedly, honey, because I don't know these people, that Ralph is a serial cheater, but we all knew that, didn't we? I never liked him. Anyway, it turns out that we are hearing that this lady who this the latest lady has been reaching out to Drew and sending her screenshots of, I guess, herself and Ralph, allegedly, because I don't know these people and rubbing this affair into Drew's face. This is a no go. But what it does tell me is this upcoming season of The Real Housewives of Atlanta is about to be lit, okay? Because we are probably about to see all of this unfold on the show. Because didn't they just recently wrap filming? Oh no, listen, Drew, aren't you glad he did not adopt Josiah? So now when you go to court, you don't have to fight for Josiah because he's yours and Ralph's name is nowhere around. Mr. I wrote a book on step parenting. Boy, get the hell out of here. I have never liked this man. I really don't. He just seems like a very self-centered, egotistic, narcissist maniac, in my opinion. Listen, honey, over at the Beverly Hills, <laughs> They are having a great time. Listen, we have seen them online. They have been filming, smiling and laughing and just chucking it up, having a great time. Having Lisa Renna not there seems as if it is really taking a good turn. The ladies are getting along. Erica is kissing Crystal, posting it all over social media. Crystal just turned 40 years old. They were at her party, backing it up, trying to twerk. They was living their best life. Now, Erica, Miss Pretty Mess, she's out on the Instagram, posted a picture of herself talking about 
it's time to write another New York Times bestseller. Gloves are off. I'm feeling good. Girl, we don't want it. We don't want it. We didn't ask for it. And who the hell bought the first one? I just want to know. Uh, let me go on and move on and mind my damn business. So what are your thoughts? She left the show. I'm good. Uh <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Uh, okay, you good? Yeah, I'm that, so good. With a period on the end? I'm so good. Period. Well, um, you know what? Listen, I'm going to give her credit. She definitely came on the show and made her mark. Right. But now it's time for new. Okay. That is absolutely it's time for new. Well, Lisa Renna is saying that now that she's gone, she said you, Garcelle, are going to have to show up and work. Bitch, I've been showing up. <laughs> I made the couch move. Now, honey, listen, Garcelle said that, didn't she? Bye, Lisa. Girl, Garcelle has been showing up. She has stood up to all of you, especially you. And then drunk Erica, you off the show, ma'am. We are done with you. Go on some damn where. Go on somewhere. Also, over at the Real Housewives of New Jersey slash Dubai, Teresa, yes, our Teresa has flown over to Dubai and filmed a cameo over there with Lisa and Ion. Okay, Teresa know the winning team. I'm just saying, this is going to be cute. I look forward to finding out what is Teresa doing over there in Dubai. Now somewhere, Chris Bassett, Candace's husband with the brown penis, he was, I don't know why I said that. Anyway, move it on. He was online in somebody's comments. I, I don't know whose comments it was, but All About the Truth picked up the comments and posted it. And he says, first off, I love the shirt. I have no idea what that means because I don't know where this comment was posted. Then he says, second, I don't know the drama with Teresa and Joe slash Melissa. Don't watch Jersey. But what I will say, Louie is one of the coolest people I met at BravoCon. Just seems like a nice guy willing to chat it up with anyone and just there to have a good time. He and I still chat on occasion. Two separate times I tried to talk slash introduce myself to Joe. He couldn't be bothered to introduce himself. So take that for what it's worth. Honey, is anybody surprised? Is anybody shocked or surprised? Joe Gorga really thinks that he is something that he is not. He really thinks that he is the number one top drawer of this show. Joe Gorga, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. I would take Chris Bassett and Louie over Joe Gorga any day. As a matter of fact, get down in the comments, peeps. And who would you want to socialize with at a BravoCon event? Joe Gorga, Chris Bassett, or Louie? I... A Joe can go on somewhere. He just acts truly like a little bitch boy. I'm sorry. I can't stand that guy. Just send me a clip. You know, I'm going through a lot of shit right now. But somebody just sent me a clip from uh, the Potomac Housewife reunion show. And Mia, um, Mia is going at it with uh, Wendy. And brother, this is kind of your fault. Because I, I taped with y'all for five minutes promoting uh, Bar One Baltimore and Bar One Miami Beach. And you turned that five minutes into nine episodes. And now my name is thrown around on the reunion sh show when in real life, I don't mess with none of those women. Okay? Giselle, Robin, cool people. The rest of them, Wendy, I shot with her one time. Five minutes. Then go out to dinner with her. I didn't have no late night snack with her. She's a married woman. She's very respectful, very honorable. Okay, so for me, for you to be talking about me and um, me, uh, me and uh, um, Wendy getting together is so disrespectful. And it's so thirsty. It's just real thirsty for you to do that just to collect that check from um, Bravo. That's, there's nothing cool about that. Okay, and you can't just use my name like that because if you use my name like that, I'm going to have my lawyer get in touch with you guys and it's going to be really ugly. Okay, because I do not know any of those women. I never see them outside of my establishment. Okay, and y'all just can't recklessly just throw people's name out there like that because it actually hurt my business. And that's irresponsible. Please cease and assist. Now, honey, now listen. Peter said, stop being so thirsty. He said he did not, did not have a snack with 
Wendy, don't disrespect this married woman with four degrees, okay? She is out here doing business. Well, honey, listen, um, Gordon didn't appreciate it, not even a tiny bit. You know, it's interesting to me that uh, who I thought was my friend, Peter Thomas, can say things like he doesn't know us like that. I wonder if he didn't know us like that the times when he'd been at our house eating our food, playing card games, and associating with other people, family members, and friends of ours. I guess he didn't know us like that when he held our baby girl and was the first man other than myself to hold our baby girl. I guess he didn't know us like that when he's gone on boat rides with us. I guess he didn't know us like that all the times that we spent at his restaurant supporting his business. And certainly I guess he didn't know us like that when he wanted to borrow $60,000 to pay his bills at bar one. So I don't know why Peter says he don't know us like that. Maybe that's his definition of not knowing us like that. Not knowing us like that when he's attending our kids' parties. So I guess if that means not knowing someone, then I guess that's what Peter's meaning is. And furthermore, to say this hasn't helped hurt, this has hurt his business. Just a few days ago, I personally spoke to Peter and he said the publicity is actually helping his business. And furthermore, the allegations that he are, he's referencing only came out a couple of days ago. So how could it have hurt his business that quickly? Peter, I guess we don't know you like that. Honey, I guess they don't know him. He acted like he didn't know them. Um, Patricia has problems, uh, uh, really. But then Mia, she had a little something extra to say. Nigeria ain't never stuffing shit about my food. <laughs> Look at the plate, y'all. Something once was in that plate. What you saying now? It was good. <laughs> oh, really? It was really? good. The snapper was good. Yeah. It was crispy. Okay, here you go. Thank you. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nigeria never stopping shit about my food. Girl, if you don't stop, girl, stop the madness. Now listen, since saying all of that, Peter did say at the top of his video that he's got too much going on. It turns out that someone has pressed charges against him for assault down at the bar one. And he got himself a good lawyer and got bailed out of jail. I don't know how that story is evolving, but listen, Patricia, stay out of women's business and keep your damn hands off of women, okay? Go fight a man some damn where. You are always up in a woman's face or always arguing with a woman, allegedly, in, in my opinion. Again, I have to give you the same disclaimer that I'm giving Michael Darby. Don't try to sue me because I don't have shit. OK, sue me if you want. I'll put it in a bankruptcy. I don't play around. I don't have no money. Anyway, stay out of women's business, Peter. Then after all of this goes down, you know how Peter had threatened to, you know, get his lawyers on people. Mia goes out on the uh, Twitter and she tweets. She says, first, I'm sorry for repeating what I heard without discussing the alleged with the person directly. I have so much love for my family and friends. It pains me to know that I have caused so much off camera drama. Brotherhood is a bond. While Jean needs more time to process, I wanted to publicly apologize for spreading a rumor. It's rude and not very nice of me. Girl, somebody got in her ass, okay? She out here ready to apologize. She's given the apology tour. However, I needed you to at Peter, I also needed you to at Wendy and give them a direct apology. You're out here spreading lies and rumors and it's not okay, Mia. That is what you have become known for on this show. Always telling lies. No one trusts you. You're gonna get Bravo into some trouble in my opinion. Then she comes back out with another tweet and it says, secondly, I want to publicly apologize to my bestie, my sister, my ace. I'm sorry I was not able to give you the emotional support you needed while embarking on a new chapter of life. I'm sorry I was nasty and rude and didn't find more patience. I know we may never be okay, but I know I want the world for you. Girl, a little too damn late. Well, in my opinion, it may not be too late for Jacqueline, but if I was Jacqueline, I would say F you and move the hell on. Anyway, you got the Porsche, right? 
Uh, you know, I'm just saying she could have at Jacqueline as well, but she didn't. I'm just saying. I, that's all. That's all I'm saying. I would just like to say about the whole Gordon and Peter situation. Gordon, your wife clearly lied on this man on national TV. So, you know, I understand that you're upset that he said he didn't really know y'all like that. And, you know, he threatened to put an attorney on y'all's butt. But, you know, your wife is out there slanging lies and making it seem like Peter was out here having sex with a married woman. Ooh, you got to get your wife to stop acting like this. Get her into some therapy because, you know, she's looking like an habitual liar out here. And last but not least, over here in the Potomac streets, somebody caught Juan Dixon at the laundromat with the athletic director from uh, CSU, uh, Juan Dixon. I know you don't want to be with Robin, allegedly, in my opinion, and that you just hanging out with her because she's got all the money and, you know, you got these kids, so you're just going to stay there until they graduate high school and move on off to college. In my opinion, that's my thoughts, you know, but you can't do this publicly. You've got to keep the director of athletics from CSU private. People catch you even at the laundromats. I'm just saying, Whew. wow. Bravo, can we get a shake up over there at the Real Housewives of Potomac? Please get rid of Robin and Giselle and bring in two new people. I just can't. Anyway, moving on. Now on to the show. So the show starts out, Teresa and Louie are having a conversation about Guys Night. And Teresa apologizes to Louie for having to put up with what she calls a complete circus. If she really wanted to apologize to somebody, she should get on social media and apologize to all of us. We've had to watch this circus for 10 years and we're sick of the shit. We're at the point now where they could take you, Joe, Melissa and Louie and your beautiful daughters and get the hell on. I mean, I've had it anyway. They showed Joe and Melissa at the new house that they're building. And all I could think about is that current lawsuit that Joe has for not paying for those construction materials, $110,000. Then people want their money, Joe. I'm just saying, you know, allegedly, I don't know these people. Anyway, they're over there talking. And of course, the conversation goes from my beautiful chandeliers to, oh gosh, Teresa, 2.2 seconds. She says, well, Joe, how did it go? He said, oh, I tried. Like he tried to have a good time. But Louie brought up the podcast. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. You started the whole thing. Louie couldn't even sit down and get a good drink before you started to bring up the whole his sister-in-laws wasn't invited to the wedding. Your wife is not in the wedding. You don't manage to show up to any events. She invited you to her birthday. You didn't come. She invited you on that birthday trip. You didn't come. She invited you to this housewarming party and you didn't come. That means that your in-laws do not need to be invited. I mean, it's ridiculous. I even asked a few people who are married, because I'm going to keep reminding y'all that I'm single in the hopes that somebody will find me a man. Anyway, moving on. I asked a few married people and I said, if you're having some major event in your life, is it mandatory that you invite your brother or sister's in-laws? And they all said, hell no. They all said no. They said, if I personally have a relationship with my brother or sister's in-laws, then of course I'll invite them, especially if we're on good terms. But there is nothing that says that you have to invite them. There's nothing that says that your sister-in-law or brother-in-law have to be in your wedding. Uh-uh. Then they talk about the whole podcast thing where, you know, they put food on the table. Well, honey, now listen, came across an old video of Joe Judice saying that if it wasn't for his family coming over and helping him with the girls, he has no idea what he would do. My cousin Teresa has been very helpful. My family's been very good as far as helping out with the kids and driving around, being that I don't have a license. So thank God for the family. Otherwise, uh, I'd really be screwed over here. 
I also came across some unaired footage of the full conversation with Teresa, Gia, and Gabriella. And they said Joe and Melissa never helped out. They cannot remember them helping out. And Teresa said that Joe only came to visit her one time while she was in jail. And that's only because the cameras were rolling. And I also came across a video of Teresa yet again stating they did not help them put food on the table. That show Teresa checks in was actually Teresa and Joe helping Melissa and Joe put food on the table. It, by saying that they put food on our table. Right which they didn't. If anything, we put food on their table. It, the show was called Teresa Checks In. So if anything, I put food on their table. Let's get that straight. You best believe that show was still gonna happen with or without Joe and Melissa. So I'm, I'm team Teresa here. That show was gonna happen anyway. But in my opinion, Joe and Melissa have been eating off of Teresa for the last 10 years. That's just my opinion. Now listen, the phone call, that was heartbreaking to me. The fact that you can't get on the phone with your sibling and just have a conversation that flows was weird. The fact that they could hardly get out, hello, how's it going? You know, Louie ends up writing stuff on a notebook in order for Teresa to know what to say or do. I said, dang, this is really in a bad spot. Their relationship is really so broken and tattered right now. I just couldn't imagine. One thing that I did truly like is Louis is extremely supportive here. You can tell that his parents are therapists because he really wants them to be able to heal and come back together as one big family. I just don't think that Joe and Melissa truly want them to be a big happy family, especially not Joe. I think that they like this because it keeps their storyline going. And did you see at the end of the call when she said, I love you, and then he said, I love you too, and they hung up? She was so surprised that he said he loved her too. I think that really touched me. I said, oh my goodness, this is terrible. You're surprised that he loves you too. That It's just, they are too much. I'm so sick of this story. I need them to either grow up, get it together, pull their relationship together, or just get off this show so we don't have to see it anymore. Then we go over to Dolores' house, which you know I'm tired. Uh, Dolores already this Dolores and she got a man story is really too damn much she got a pool that was a beautiful pool um, her mama came over her mom was looking good she says that she is keeping on her diet I was so happy to see her mother and I thought it was so cute because Dolores said hi little Frankie and then when her mom came in her mom said hi little Frankie and then soon as she seen Dolores she said hi little Dolores and I said, they are the cutest family. They love each other and everybody's little. I just thought that they were adorable, but you know what? Get off Frank's neck, okay? I'm happy for you, Dolores. I realize that Paul is your man and he is a man's man. He's gonna take care of things. Him and Frank are not gonna be friends like David and Frank. You know, most people are not friends like David and Frank. Anyway, give Frank a minute to acclimate himself to this new way of life. You and him have been doing this game for 20 some years. Give him a minute. I'm just saying Dolores does deserve to live her life to the fullest. I'm not saying she doesn't, but give Frank a minute. Now Bill and Jennifer go out to dinner. Now, honey, listen, Jennifer, stop it. Okay. The whole thing with I just say yes and give the kids anything because they had such a hard year last year. Listen, put the kids in a little therapy and you get in there with them. But stop doing that. I don't think that this is the right track. You're just going to keep giving them anything and everything they ask for. That's a band aid. They need to go to a therapist so that they can heal from the hurt. You giving them stuff is going to create a bigger problem in the future. In my opinion, parents, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. 
would you just give your kids anything and everything they ask for because they found out that their daddy is not perfect and he cheated? Or would you try to get them into some therapy and explain to them that, you know, you have to work for things that you get in life. We're not just going to give you everything you ask us for. Now, I do think that kids deserve to have things. Don't get me wrong, because I spoil the hell out of my child. But he knows the value of a dollar. He knows that he has to work. And he also knows that nothing in life is free and nobody owes you anything. I'm just saying. Now, Bill got this new Ferrari and she wants to bring it up. Listen, I understand where she's coming from. I really do. But at the same time, isn't Bill the one who makes all the money? I mean, she makes money off the show, but Bill makes all the money. You know what I mean? And he must be going through something. So let him have a damn car. Anyway, while they're having this discussion, he's looking at her as if he's ready to head out and have another affair. He's looking at her like he is sick and tired, like sick and tired, as if she is tap dancing on his last nerve. I'm just saying she's doing a lot, but I understand her side of the argument as well. She thinks that he doesn't support her and he thinks that she disrespects him. Now, listen, I understand that he is trying to calm the waters, get everybody relaxed and calm so that they will get off his wife's back. I get it. I really do. But in this instance, which again, peeps, I am not married anyway. I understand that she wants him to support her. And I think that he should support her, be there, whatever it is that she needs publicly right there in the heat of the moment. But I also think that once you leave and it's just the two of them, he should be able to tell her how he feels and the truth. He should be able to let her know, girl, what you just said and what you just did was wrong and disrespectful for these reasons. But don't do it to her publicly. And at the same time, she should allow him to talk to her and tell her how he feels. I would never want to be married to somebody who was just going to gas me up 24 seven. I need you to be 100 with me at all times. Don't disrespect me in public. Back me up in public, but off to the side by ourselves privately. Let me know that I just made a fool out of myself and you. I'm just saying, get down in the comments, peeps. Am I seeing this wrong? Am I reading this wrong? Get me all the way together. Louie, he brought up the podcast and it gets me crazy. I yelled. We stepped up to the plate. Put food on the table. If I didn't put Melissa in my wedding, I'm not close to Melissa. Why would I be close to her fam? Try calling right now. They just asked me to come to her party. Hi. What's up? I'm happy you answered the phone. You want to make peace? Peace, yeah, peace. Come, Finita. Love you. Love you too. Bye. I can't believe that I love you. Oh my God. You don't feel that you got me on your back? Is that what it is? I feel that sometimes you take my love for granted because you know I will always forgive you. My feelings are hurt that you on me. I'm trying to defuse that situation. I like, said. Who are you defusing you're... the situation for? Who? For you. Not for them. For you. What, what? Oh, my God. Do you say he's your stepbrother? Have you started saying that already? Yeah. Oh, I love that. <laughs> now, Rachel goes out with Jen F. And honey, let me just tell you, Rachel is a little cutie. She is, but she is no match for Jennifer Aiden. No, ma'am. Give Jen 50 feet. Anyway, this Jen F, she's cute and everything. And I appreciate that she had that major weight loss. Her telling Rachel she wasn't sharing that margarita pizza was hilarious to me because I I'm with Jen F. Uh Uh-uh. Get your own lunch. Okay. This is my pizza. Okay. This, this is my pizza. I'm just saying I'm here for that. However, what I'm not here for is both of them trying to get a moment. Oh, Jen called me. She talked to me about my nose and that comment that she made. Now, I just want to say when they showed the flashback of that comment that Jen made to her about her nose, Jen was all kinds of wrong. Now, last season, They were talking bad crap about your nose, ma'am. Why would you do that to her? And I'm still looking at your nose thinking that your original nose was prettier. Not saying that something's wrong with her current nose, but her original nose. I liked her original nose much better. 
in a way that was just rude. But then she says, well, she was talking to me about Dolores. So the hell what you have been present when her and Dolores have acted a fool, not once, not twice, but three times, three times, I believe. And, you know, once at the 80s skate party, once at the mozzarella thing, and then once at the why did they make this calendar event? And so she's not allowed to tell you her side. She's not allowed to talk to you about it. I think that Rachel made it more than it was. I think she put a little razzle dazzle on it, a little spin to it just to get a moment. And then Jen F says, oh, she called me too, just to talk about Marge. Uh-huh. So later we find out she did call her. She did talk about Marge, but Jen F wasn't defending Marge. I believe Jennifer when she says that Jen F girl slow the hell down because I don't think you ready for Jennifer Aiden at all. I was going to bring Tupperwares in my purse. Just, um, yeah, you guys are a chosen family. We miss you, Joe. <laughs> Melissa, that's a dick thing to say. It's OK. It's hurtful. You have to think before you speak. I, I know that's hard. Just don't like Danielle. She is a horrible dresser. And she wore those hamper shorts two weeks in a row. I hate hearing my name conversation. Did you say something to her? She's not significant to me. Oh wait, time out. I have to jump in. But is this appropriate or does it look like it came out of a dirty hamper? Right? No. Right now you don't look like you're going to a pool party. Okay. okay. However, I never looked you up and down like that. I you saw you do that. She doesn't even realize how judgy she is. Oh. Here's the difference between me I and you. you. I got a great. vibe from you that I didn't like, so I didn't invite you to my house for my party. You want to do a shot? Come here, bitch. Jackie, Jackie. She bitched about you and said you're a snob. Saying I'm a snob is not the worst thing. I am a little snob. Right, I said you spoke about me. I'm, okay I'm sure you guys talk about me. I'm but allowed, still talking I'm about allowed to state the facts of the matter. Jennifer, but you oh, you did the Jennifer same thing to me. Oh, Wait, you were talking yeah. about me? Yes, Don? you did. And you said, I'm giving no. you contacts. I said, Jennifer, no, no, no. I said to you, this is not for you to get involved. I'm just telling you the history. Did I not say that? Yes, right. it is. It's you an idiot. Oh, my what God. Do not call me an idiot. idiot. I said, I'm sorry that I spoke about your nose job. People badmouth me about my terrible nose job. I felt bad about your terrible nose job, and I just felt bad. What'd she say? What'd she say? about your terrible nose job. Do you believe she said that to you? It was not like what I wanted to be a part of. Good for you, Rachel. You want a medal? It's good. Somebody give her a medal. Now, Dolores and Marge go out to look for a gift for the housewarming party. Marge is outraged. Outraged. Melissa's family is such good people. I am hurt for you. Your family is such good people and I just don't know what's going on with Teresa. Why didn't Teresa invite them? Yet and still, we saw you at Teresa's wedding. We seen you at the housewarming party. You know what side your bread is buttered on. Girl, quit playing with us. So she calls Melissa and Melissa is indignant. She is hurt. She is upset. I can't believe they're treating my family like shit. They're such good people. Those same good people was out on line bashing the hell out of Teresa. Girl gone some damn where. You and your husband was on the podcast talking shit about Teresa and how Joe wasn't working and y'all was putting food on the table. Get the hell out of here. Your family is not invited. Get over it. Then Joe decides that he's going to make sure that he's the victim here. He's not going to the housewarming party. I just can't do it. I feel unwelcome there. I just can't do it. Really, Joe? Oh, gosh, we've taken out our tiny violin. I'm so sorry that you can't go. Get the hell out of here with this shit. So Melissa decides that she's going to go because she wants to keep the peace. She wants this to be a peaceful situation. No, she just wants to get a check and be on camera. Anyway, when Teresa tells the girls that Joe's not coming, Gia is pretty much like, oh, who gives a shit? You know, but Melania, who, by the way, Melania is adorable. When she was a little girl, I thought she was a little smart mouthed at little girl. She was doing way too much. She would have been in time out if she was my daughter. But she has turned out to be just as adorable as I don't know what. Anyway, Melania said it was hoping they were going to come. I haven't seen them in months. And Teresa mentions that they hadn't seen Joe or Melania. Melissa in six months, nor have they seen the children. Joe should have showed up if he was serious about keeping the peace. 
Now, listen, did everybody see how happy Teresa is? Teresa is over the moon happy. She really is living in some sort of love bubble. I'm single, peeps. Anyway, um, I like bubbles and pineapples. Anyway, listen, when she was introducing Louis' son to everybody, she kept calling him her stepson. She was so excited about it. I am so happy for Teresa, and I am loving this kinder, I go to therapy, Teresa. I hope she keeps going to that therapist because she, you know, she need to be in a therapist office regularly. Anyway, Marge is being Marge. Marge is being Marge, telling everybody that Jen was talking about me when she was talking to Jennifer F. And she said that I'm jealous. I think you might be. Yes, I think you might be. You might be jealous of the fact that Jen and her husband don't have any lawsuits. I don't know. It just seems to me that you're jealous of her. You always want her to be sad and lonely in a bad marriage. Sounds like you. I'm just saying. Well, we see Melissa having a very awkward conversation with Gia and Gabrielle. Oh, it was bad. I mean, yikes. I kept thinking I felt bad for all of them, including Melissa. Her face looked sad. She looked shocked. She didn't know what to say. The conversation wasn't flowing. You know, they said that they missed, you know, Melissa's kids. She said the kids missed them. And then that's when I got ticked off because I said, there are four adults and if they could all just pull their heads out their ass and take a step back, look in the mirror and see their faults as well as the faults of the other adults involved and decide to get together and work this out, hash this out, those kids wouldn't have to miss each other. We wouldn't have Melissa here and not Joe. You know what I mean? These four people have got to figure out how they can put it together for the sake of the entire family, especially these kids. Now, Teresa makes this statement about how happy she is. Everybody is there. They're the chosen family. And Melissa, with the help of Marge, who I've yet to figure out what the hell her storyline is for the last three seasons, Marge seems to be the Giselle Bryant of the show. I'm just going to go around and spread gossip and talk shit about people. And that's going to be my storyline. I think it's time for a shakeup at Jersey, too. Um get Marge, demote Marge to a friend of, I'm sick of her. She's not giving shit, but trouble, period. She's over there helping Melissa feel worse, talking about, I can't believe she said that. Uh, excuse me, if her husband had shown up, if Joe was there, I'm sure she would have said, hey, you guys, my brother's here or something. Chosen family, she didn't mean anything by that. She was not trying to hurt them. And Bill Aiden in the background screaming, we miss you, Joe. What the hell was that? Shut up, Bill Aiden. He must have been drunk. Marge made that stupid comment about you should think before you speak. And then she says it's hard for Teresa. I said, wait a minute, Marge, do you listen to yourself at all? You are the last person that should judge what anybody does or says. Now, Jackie, friend of Marge, honey, you tried it again. You are not ready for Danielle. I just want to go ahead and tell Bravo, Bravo people, Danielle is to stay, okay? Don't do anything with Danielle. Leave her on the show. I love this girl. Anyway, one thing I thought was weird. First of all, Jackie, you lied. You did look that girl up and down and you thought you were real cute last week when you told Melissa and Marge that you looked her up and down and you didn't like her outfit. Then you made the comment that she wore those shorts two weeks in a row. People are allowed to repeat their clothes. They own them. You know, a lot of people wear the same thing more than once. Okay, some people wear the same thing about 10,000 times before they throw it out. Everybody's not rich. I'm just saying, and you are no fashionista. 
So I don't know why the hell you're judging this woman and what she's wearing. And then the whole get your hands out my face when you know good and daggone well that all the people, not all, but you know what I mean. The Staten Island people, the Jersey girls, they all talk with their hands. And for you to ask her not to talk with her hands and then start talking with yours, girl, get the hell up out of here. We know you need a moment. And just like Danielle said, that's her house. She don't have to invite you. Why would she? You are a part time friend of Marge. Get the hell up out of here. Then later you see her trying to be nice to Jennifer Aiden. I said, oh, shoot, I see. You don't want to just be a part time friend of Marge. You try to be a part time friend of Jennifer's, too, so that you can get on camera. She was just being nice to everybody because she doesn't want to not be at other people's events in the hopes that she might be able to become a full cast member again. No, New Jersey's Teddy Mellencamp. We don't want you. We don't. Okay, and then Marge just flying over there real quick in the middle of their conversation. Oh, she talked bad about you. She said you were a snob. Marge, Marge, you are 52 or 54, whatever. I don't know. You're in your 50s. Grow to hell up. Seriously. And also, Jackie, weren't you the one that was all upset about women downing other women? Why do you think it's okay to keep downing Danielle? That's not cute. And Marge, go on some damn where. All of a sudden, this big argument starts. None of those girls can handle Jennifer Aiden. She holds her own. She says it like it is. None of them wanted to give her the opportunity to be able to speak. There was all that screaming and hollering. I think that Rachel lied about how the conversation went down about Dolores. I think that Jennifer F was lying about the situation that it, how it went down with Marge. But when Jennifer Aiden talked about Rachel's nose, I said, Oh God, why are you doing this? I chuckled. I shouldn't have laughed, but it, it was a moment in a way they can't handle her. And Jennifer, please stop it. Don't talk about anybody else's nose. The way you were so hurt and upset last season about your nose, how dare you bring up this woman's nose? I personally think that Rachel is a beautiful woman. I think that she has an amazing figure. This woman clearly works out on a regular basis and she cares about the way she looks. I think she looks perfect. I think Jennifer looks perfect as well. Just please stop doing that. That is not okay. Stop talking about this woman's nose. And Marge, you shouldn't talk about her nose or you can't talk about her nose. Wait a minute. Didn't you and Jackie and Melissa talk mad shit about her nose last season? So you can talk about Jennifer's nose, but Jennifer can't talk about Rachel's nose because you're friends with Rachel. I see how that goes. Listen, I can't wait to see what happens next week. But I don't care what's going on with Teresa, Joe, and Melissa. I want this wedding to be over and I want to move on from it. They are too daggone much. Anyway, peeps, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. And until next time, bye. <laughs>